Australia's digital sovereignty is absolutely essential to our national security, our economic growth and the public trust as a whole. By investing in sovereign AI, it really allows not only the Australian government, but governments around the world to harness the power of AI while maintaining control over the data and our technological future. Data sovereignty is important with regards to certain types of data that organisations are collecting. I think we're seeing these days that industry leading security vendors may not have a local point of presence to, to store data in their own cloud locally, but it depends on the type of data that they're tagging or taking back to their security clouds, their crowdsourced threat intelligence capabilities. Australia's ability to safeguard its data um, and ensure sovereignty is really going to be about the government building on the policy frameworks they've already put in place um, to ensure that we leverage the full potential of something like AI for the benefit of all in Australia, business and citizens. It's going to, I think, require the government to continue to provide the vision and the policy framework, but I think it's also important that we're working together as government and industry, that the industry is bringing to the party the expertise, that together we're educating not only society but business in order for us to actually realise for the benefit of Australia and our economic prosperity the full potential of technologies like AI. Local governance of data infrastructure is critically important, particularly of government data sets and critical systems. However, we also need to recognise that there is a need to share data, a bit like free trade. And so data must be secure, but we must also be able to share that information as and when appropriate. So for example, in national security scenarios, or as we did during COVID, where states and governments were sharing real-time health data in order to get on top of the pandemic. The government departments are struggling to figure out which data they need to keep and where sovereignty matters. They're very traditional in their approach as well, so I don't think they're as quick to move to cloud infrastructure or, or cloud capabilities as private organisations because there is obviously inherent risk and trepidation, I suppose, that they approach it with. We need to continue to consider the amount of investments being made in digital infrastructure in Australia. I think we're gradually starting to see increased momentum, but what we know is that in 2025 across the Asia-Pacific region, that governments will spend a third of their AI investment on sovereign AI. So it's critically important that we continue to think about policies, frameworks that are put in place and we think about where we are going to make those investments uh, for the benefit of Australia. We need to think about how those investments are going to be critical to our overall productivity as a nation. Our role in supporting and advocating for digital sovereignty encompasses multiple areas from federal submissions to working with our members to understand what they want and ensuring that we are delivering to government policy recommendations that support not just our members but the technology industry in itself. And that ranges from startups all the way through to multinationals. We also play a part in convening together government bodies, academia, and industry, bringing them together to not just talk about policy, but actually start to put into place actions around skills, infrastructure, and what we might need to be digitally ready as a workforce and as a nation.